Hey there, welcome. I'm Walter Haydock and I'm the founder and CEO of Stackware. Today, I'm going to be going through the AI security maturity model, which is a seven module document that lays out the key steps for having secure and compliant AI deployments. So just a little bit about me. Before founding Stackware, I worked at a data governance startup called Privacera, which was backed by Accel and Insight Partners, and then also worked at a B2B software company called PTC, where I managed the security for the Internet of Things product lines. And before that, I went to business school, but I started my career working in government as a Marine Corps intelligence officer, but also serving on Capitol Hill and working as an analyst in the intelligence community. So I'd also love to talk through some of the work I've done with other companies so far. On the left, you can see a testimonial from a company called Encore. They are the essentially back end for a lot of financial analytics. So they are a very AI heavy company and I worked with their CISO to help identify, map, and propose mitigations for some key AI-related risks. And then I also worked with a company called Reputation, which, as you might suspect, helps companies manage their online image. And because they are ingesting a lot of customer and customer's customer data through a variety of sources and processing it with AI, obviously there were some governance and privacy and security concerns, and I help them identify those and uh, map out a responsible way ahead. So with that, I'm going to jump into the outline for what we're going to cover. There are seven components in this presentation, but obviously there are more than seven things you need to consider when you're building your AI governance and security program, but this is what we're going to tackle today. All right, so first off, developing clear business and security requirements is an absolutely vital first step. You can't really figure out what security means in a given context unless you identify what the business requirements are ahead of time. For example, what should your AI application be able to do, not be able to do? What sort of deviation from these requirements are you going to accept? For example, if this is a meme generator app, then you can probably accept some deviation. And maybe even that's that's good. You, you want some creativity. But if you're doing fraud detection or doing something in the healthcare space, then your level of deviation is probably going to be much lower that you can accept. What are your reputation and, and branding constraints? So, you know, you may have a, a spirited or a, a enthusiastic or a entertaining chatbot that might be okay for some brands, but for others, it might not be. And then what are your what are your contractual obligations? How can you process AI? Are there any restrictions that are in place that have been put on you by by your customers? Uh, have you promised to handle data in certain ways that would prevent AI processing? So these are all things that you should think through ahead of time. And just to give you an example of the importance of this, a couple months ago, a Chevy dealership rolled out a GPT-4 powered chatbot and pretty soon the internet went to town, tearing it apart, making it do things like offering to sell a car for $1. And there's actually been some recent news reporting from Canada specifically that showed a, a chatbot's recommendation can in fact be considered binding in some situations. So, you know, this could be a pretty big deal if someone pushed their case here and tried to, um, you know, test this in court. So understanding, you know, if this is an acceptable outcome or if it's not, that's something that a business leader will need to determine at a time. So here I've laid out the three maturity levels when it comes to business and security requirements. At the top, you've got requirements that are communicated informally. In the middle, you've got some sort of system of record. And then in the bottom area, you've got uh, very clear confidentiality, integrity, and availability requirements when it comes to data. All right, next up, once you've understood the business requirements, getting into the privacy and compliance needs will be important. 
So some key things to ask are, you know, what are your state data breach notification requirements if you're in the US? All 50 states have their own requirements, so knowing what those are will be key. Are you handling PHI, protected health information? If so, then HIPAA will have some uh, mandatory requirements for processing and notification of any incidents. What frameworks do you need to follow? or What frameworks do you say you follow? That's going to come into play a little bit later on when we talk about communication. Do you classify your data by handling requirements? I recommend that you do. What are your customer obligations when it comes to data? Uh, have you made specific promises? And then are you subject to things like the GDPR or the CCPA when it comes to data privacy requirements? So as you can see, there's been a lot of focus from regulators on AI applications. Obviously, the gorilla in the room is OpenAI, so they've been getting the most attention, but firms that use AI are increasingly going to see this type of scrutiny. So some things to think about are at a, a base level, a rudimentary level, you would have a boilerplate or not even any policy describing your privacy and compliance practices in place. You'll do ad hoc handling and classification. At the developing level, you'll have pipelines reviewed for unnecessary sensitive data or um, overly expansive retrieval augmented generation pipelines or, or architectures. And then at the most sophisticated stage, you'll have automated processing for compliance uh, and privacy requests like the right to be forgotten. And almost all your data will be classified using automated tagging. All right, so next up is to publish and enforce an AI policy. <clears throat> Some key considerations are having realistic expectations. A blanket ban is likely to create shadow AI, as you can see in the background. You've got some AI operating in the shadows, involving the right stakeholders, but also making clear who has the final decision, preferably a business leader who's making that call. Consider what other policies need modification, acceptable use, vulnerability management, incident response. These are all key things. Document your risk tolerance and acceptable and unacceptable behaviors, behaviors as well, or delegate responsibility for laying out those things to a separate procedure. Something that's also important is avoiding a paper tiger policy that is not enforced or is not even enforceable because it's so vague. Make those business leaders own risk acceptance and policy approval because if it's just forced on them, it's not really going to get much done uh, if the security team is just trying to force business units to, to do their bidding. And then also address some of the key AI risks like AI processing in your supply chain. So some key things to think about in your policy are things like unintended training, as you've seen from the headlines here, both Samsung and Amazon have gotten burned by employees using ChatGPT, reportedly at least, in a very permissive way and potentially feeding confidential information into the tool on which it was trained and then was able to regurgitate back to a other users, specifically in the case of Amazon, there's evidence of that happening. So in the most basic stage, you'll have no policy and you'll just have ungoverned use. This is not where you want to be. The developing stage may have a boilerplate policy in place, but uh, there'll be contradictory guidance. And maybe it's the security team that's pushing this through without ownership of any business units. And then at the most sophisticated level, you'll have a business team that is owning the policy guidance and will have clear references to other supporting documentation like registers of, of people who are responsible for certain things, procedures for implementing the policy, and uh, there will be clear timelines for accomplishing all of these tasks. All right, next up is maintaining an AI asset inventory. Having a single source of truth for all of your company assets is definitely a good thing to, to have, although I found that 
even the most sophisticated organizations have substantial difficulty in keeping track of their assets in a consolidated and up-to-date manner. This is especially important when it comes to AI, because if you aren't tracking these things in your inventory, then they essentially become shadow AI, um, even if they've had some sort of approval somewhere, somewhere along the way. If you don't know that they're operating, then they are operating in the shadows. Some things to think about are looking at data provenance, subprocessor status, specifically with respect to GDPR and CCPA, and then also looking at trust boundaries with third parties. So are you authenticating data flows to these third parties uh, in your asset inventory? And how are you protecting that data? I think the Cyclone DX software bill of materials is, is a great way to track these types of things, especially when it comes to software as a service tools. And StackAware has a available software bill of materials using Cyclone DX uh, for inspection and review. It's publicly available at sbomb.stackaware.com. So these are just some examples of the growing challenge associated with Shadow AI. And this is something that a regularly updated and detailed asset inventory can help you avoid. So at the most rudimentary level, there's going to be no inventory. Employees just create new SaaS applications, servers, virtual machines at will without any sort of coordination. In the more developed side of things, they will have there will be some sort of asset inventory using a spreadsheet, but this is updated manually. And then at the most sophisticated level, there will be a single source of truth that's updated in an automated or automated way using tools that detect new AI or other types of, uh, of IT asset usage. Okay, so step or module number five is having standard operating procedures. And some key things that you're going to want to update or create when you're onboarding new AI tools relate to things like incident response, decommissioning, data classification, tool onboarding, vulnerability management, and you can automate the implementation of these procedures using generalist tools like no code systems like Zapier or AI specific security tools like prompt security, which is a partner of Stackware. And what you have here in this screenshot is an example or an excerpt from Stackware's standard operating procedure for AI risk management that specifically shows the incident response procedure. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. So this is just an example of what you would like to avoid optimally. If you don't have a standard operating procedure and you have some sort of incident involving AI, your two choices are basically going to be panic or panic. So better be prepared and, and not end up here in the first place. So in terms of maturity, at the most basic level, there'll be no SOPs. Everything will be done point to point and kind of ad hoc. There will be a war room declared if there's some sort of decision or incident to take care of. More developing organizations will have documented SOPs. They will occasionally do tabletop exercises. And in the most sophisticated organizations, these procedures will be documented as code. They'll be automated and there will be regular drilling of these, including unannounced exercises to ensure that employees fully understand the objectives and requirements of these procedures. All right, next up, module six is communicating your AI security posture externally. So some key things to think about are, how will you respond to security questionnaires? Will you have a self-service trust center? Stackware maintains one of these that discusses its security measures and also links to the SBOM that I mentioned. What are your terms and conditions going to look like? Are you going to opt in customers to AI training? Are you going to give them the option to have their data trained on? Or are you going to provide no option at all? For example, Gmail doesn't provide the option to opt out of predictive AI training for spam classification and things of that nature. Uh, if you look at Zoom, for example, they changed their terms and conditions in kind of a sly manner in early 2023. And this came back to bite them later in the year when a security researcher went through the terms and identified some things in there that were quite expansive when it came to training on customer data. 
Zoom backpedaled, backpedaled very quickly and changed their terms and conditions again to state that they weren't doing certain types of training. And actually, when you look at them after the fact, they weren't that crazy. But the way in which they made the change and the fact that they were not super transparent about it came back to bite them. Something else to look at if you're a publicly traded company is how are you, how are you going to describe AI processing in your SEC filings? The SEC having become quite hawkish when it comes to cybersecurity and demanding that publicly traded companies be very descriptive in their security measures. So just to give you an example here, SolarWinds got uh, hit uh, along with its CISO in its personal capacity with a suit from the SEC alleging that it failed to disclose certain material information and that it materially misled investors specifically related to their security statement, which was an external facing document. And allegedly, according to the SEC, SolarWinds claimed it was complying or following the NIST cybersecurity framework. And according to the SEC, SolarWinds was not. There was quite a bit of controversy here. There may be some mis misunderstanding by the SEC as to exactly what the NIST CSF means and some conflation with, with other NIST standards. But suffice it to say, it's important to have a clear explanation of your security posture, including when it comes to artificial intelligence. So at the most rudimentary level, there'll be no communication about AI usage, and there'll be uh, no discussion of it in your, in your privacy policy or, or other documentation. In the more developed stage of things, you'll have some mention of AI usage, mainly focused on business use cases without any discussion of guardrails, and there'll be ad hoc internal processes to respond to customer or regulatory filings. But at the most sophisticated tier, you, there'll be basically perfect alignment between internal and external documentation regarding AI. You'll have a security and privacy trust center that talks about AI training and data retention, and this will all be consistent throughout your terms and conditions. All right, so the last step of the maturity model is your ability to audit and improve over time. <clears throat> what you'll want to have in place is an automated system to confirm compliance uh, with manual oversight. Some things that you'll want to do is that if there's ever an incident, move uh, to a root cause analysis, make sure you identify what the problems were. And then for um, those who are more advanced, look at getting um, external certifications, like specifically ISO 42001 for your AI uh, management system. And this is an emerging standard that was just released at the end of 2023. And organizations are beginning to undergo certification to document the rigor of their AI governance program. This can go hand in hand with things like ISO 27001, which is going to be extended by documents like ISO 27090 and 91, which refer to cybersecurity and privacy specific practices relevant to organizations using AI. So there are a lot of options when it comes to attestations and certifications of your AI usage, and it may make sense based on your business requirements to pursue them. So in the most basic phase, you're not going to have any sort of auditing, internal or external, no root cause analyses after incidents. It'll just be kind of a constant firefight. Moving on from there, there'll be ad hoc RCAs after incidents. There'll be uh, the beginnings of systematic internal review and potentially looking at external reviews. And then in the most sophisticated stage, there's always a root cause analysis done after an incident or or non-compliance event. And then there will be some sort of external seal of approval for the organization regarding its AI use. All right, so all of this is quite, challenge, quite challenging to implement. The good news is that Stack Aware specializes in this type of work. 
and we are prepared to help organizations move rapidly through the AI security maturity model. Some potential resources that you can look at if you are viewing the presentation uh, in the link below, you can check out some of our assets like a free AI security email course and assessment guide. We've got some pre-built security and governance resources, some of which I've alluded to. You can subscribe to the Deploy Securely newsletter where we go deep on these issues two to four times a week. And then please follow me on LinkedIn or X. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope this has been helpful for you in gauging your AI security maturity level and determining the way ahead. Please reach out if you have any questions and set up a call with Stackware using the link in this presentation. If you're interested in having an AI risk assessment or having Stackware build out your AI governance program. Thanks a lot.